Hello my friends and welcome to my channel. This is a studio vlog with Susie Pogue. That's me. I'm an artist and illustrator in Bloomington, Indiana. I just want to share with you what I've been up to, which is a lot. So let me get started at the end. <laughs> this is what I did yesterday. I just really enjoyed painting this particular landscape and I used genuine amethyst for the sky which is super exciting. It really gave some very interesting textures, so I had a lot of fun doing that. And both of them were painted with this palette here with the exclusion of the addition of the gold and the sky. I created this palette to be my on-the-go landscape palette, so I wanna share that with you. I also have some products in the works. I would like to do a little painting with you, and we're gonna do a book review the book review for will be A Field Guide to Color, a watercolor workbook by Lisa Solomon. I want to show you my new landscape palette, and I think the easiest way to do that is to paint with it. And I can talk to you about it as I go. Today I'm using the Princeton Neptune Round number no. 8. This is an extremely versatile brush that I would recommend if you are but just a beginner, this is like the only brush that you would probably need is a number seven or a number eight round. It does most of the things that you need it to do in watercolor. Anything else is really just a specialty brush. What I wanted in this palette, this on the go palette, meaning I'm gonna take it out into the world and paint with this. I really wanted to create a palette that was gonna be flexible in the environment that I live in, which is, sorry, there's like a little bit of dog hair, ah, dog ownership. I really wanted to be able to paint a variety of scenes. I wanted to have, first of all, an awesome set of blues to do skies, whether they were stormy skies or beautiful, clear blue skies. Or a combination of both. This is cobalt teal. In addition to cobalt teal, a color I've been really really liking for skies is the Schmincke Glacier Green. It's one of their recent granulating paints and it has Potter's Pink in it which is just a really, really fun muted rose pigment that absolutely refuses to stay mixed into a color. As this dries, the pink is going to pop out of the blue and it gives you like a really interesting sort of warm, stormy look to it. So I'm really loving that. I think the combination with the brighter blue just gives you the idea that it was a nice day and the clouds are rolling in. So we're just going to finish making our cloudy sky. One of the other colors that is really great in this palette for stormy skies is over here. This is my key, by the way. This is also a Schmincke paint. It is called Tundra Violet. And it's gonna break and have warm orangey undertones to this otherwise stormy gray violet color. I think what I've done is created a very dramatic sky. And the next thing I'm gonna do is show you these greens. So I've got a mixture here. I've got bright green gold, serpentine, which is a genuine mineral paint. Then I have two forest Schmincke paints. So I think with this stormy looking sky, we're actually going to go for the cooler color. And the idea is just to have kind of a tree line here. 
And it's important with the tree line to make sure that it's not too flat because that's not how trees grow. And also it's in the distance. Either it comes towards us, which I'm going to do over here, or it stays smaller in the distance. And I'm just going to encourage it up into the sky. What that's going to do is give a very gentle background as if those trees are receding into the distance. And then I gave myself a variety of earth colors to do the ground. Here I've got a lot of granulating colors, including this really beautiful goatite, which is also a mineral paint. So it makes a lovely field color. I'm just going to have it kiss up to the edge of our trees, like so. And I think I'm going to add in a little bit of this Mars yellow, which is a synthetic yellow ochre type color. Okay, I've made that darker in the back and lighter in the front, which is why it doesn't look like it's receding properly. So we're going to fix that by adding a little bit more water. And let's vary the color of foliage that we have. I'm going to go over here to an even more blue green, slightly darker, and add that into what would be foliage near us. Then one of my absolute favorite go-tos, a little bit of burnt sienna. For the front. You'll notice I sometimes hold my brush like this and if I'm doing these broad kind of ground foundation strokes I hold it sideways. I also really like the dry brush effect as you get to the bottom here. I've used it in my other paintings as well. And I also I would I would like to put some darker brown. This one here is really interesting. It's a hematite, but I think with the orange it's just not going to work right, so we're not going to use that brown. Instead I'm going to use this glacier brown, Schmincke glacier brown, and just maybe like that. The forest is not all green, right? So all I'm doing is just breaking up the green a little bit giving the eye something more interesting. I'm using my brush straight up and down to have the teeny tiniest point touching it. And that's it. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to let it dry. Most of the magic will happen in that drying process. So make sure not to use a blow dryer when you're working with these granulating paints because you'll lose some of the beauty of the flow as it dries. I'm going to move that aside and we can look at our next new thing. So this is now mostly dry. I think you can see how we've got more of a sense of depth with the, oops, with the darker color in the foreground receding into the tree line. And a super dramatic sky from the different colors that I've got. I love this palette. I'm very happy with it and I will share all the different paints in it below so you can make it yourself if you are so inclined. By the way, I did not mention that these paints are made by Stoneworks Mill, which is an artisan handmade watercolor manufacturer in the United States. And they make these amazing uh, paints, not just metallics and glitters, but all kinds of different paint. And they recently started up manufacturing again after a little bit of a break, so that's exciting. The other thing that I've done recently is I've launched this line of mushroom stickers. I did the artwork for these and digitized it, sent it off to make stickers, and these are available on my website as well as in local retail locations. So these are super exciting. I really 
I mean, this one is my logo, so you know that I love it. But now I've got a whole set of different mushrooms to go with it. And I also did a set of cards. These are five by seven greeting cards. On the back they have my information. They come, obviously they come with an envelope in a sleeve when you buy them. And they are also available on my website as well as at the retailers locally. The last thing that I am working on, and I am so excited about this, let me just move this out of the way, is bum -ba -da -da, a watercolor kit. This watercolor kit is a companion piece to my Patreon membership in which I will provide month to month these different projects that you can do. But I also wanted to have a retail version of this so that people that don't want to um, necessarily spend a monthly fee have access to the paintings and all the stuff that you need to make this. So the kit, which this is just a mock-up, so I'm gonna have different graphics on it, but it's a start. The kit is gonna have everything inside it that you need to do the painting. So you have the paint and the paint brushes, the paper, which I'm also very happy to say I uh, was able to get 100% cotton watercolor paper for the kids, which means this is the highest quality artist materials that you are getting to make your own version of this painting. The original has just the flower, and if you join my membership over on Patreon, I will do the background for you and show you that additional bonus. And let me just show you what's inside the kit. So when you open it up, you get the brushes that you need, as well as the paint that you need in this glassine envelope. You will see that I have individual paints here for you with instructions on how to release this gently so that you don't pull off all of your paint. But it's in this protective envelope and that's all that you need to paint this and honestly you could do so much more with it as well. So that is what you get in the kit and they are going to be available as pre-orders on my website and they will also be available at local retailers for you pick up in person if you happen to be in this area. I also put together this set of swatch cards and I filmed how to do it. I go step by step through how to make the cards, cut them out, punch them, and also how to paint them so that you get a flat wash and a graduated wash. So look out for that in the future, that video is coming your way. I wanted to move the paint out of the way so I could show you my latest project. This is my personal art project. I have decided that on Thursdays, which is the day that my kiddo has extra things to do after school, I am going to go out and paint my local parks. So this is the local parks project. This particular park is a brand new park in my area called Switchyard park in Bloomington, Indiana. And Bloomington, we're so fortunate that they actually make a huge effort to put native plants into all of their landscaping. So these are actually native plants in a tree row at the park. And if you were walking in the park, you would see this view. Even though there are buildings in this park, I did not represent them because that's not what I'm interested in. I love the nature. I'm really looking forward to doing this project. I think that there are so many beautiful parks, not just kids parks, but state parks and national forests and all kinds of stuff to be discovered. And luckily it's something that I can do by myself without any risk of getting COVID. So <laughs> it's the type of activity that is really needed right now is just to get outside. There are a lot more of us that are trying to go out into nature given the fact that we have 
um, in many cases been asked to stay away from public spaces indoors. So this is my homage to the refuge areas that have been available to me during my quarantine. And I'm getting a little emotional here, I don't know why, but I just think that these public spaces are so important and there's a lot of ways that we can get involved, including canopy projects, native projects, cleanup projects. So, you know, everything to do with the park is fundamentally aligned with the vision that I have for my life and for my business. So this is really um, a project that is near and dear to my heart and I'm very excited to continue to work on it and share with you. Lastly today, I want to talk about a book that I just picked up called A Field Guide to Color, a watercolor workbook by Lisa Solomon. And here's some more of the details. It's made by Roost Books. And she did the artwork, which is always nice, considering it's a book about art. I really, really like this book. It is on super thick paper, and the reason for that is she has left all kinds of pages for you to actually do the exercises in the book. Mind blown. Obviously this is not like high quality watercolor paper, but I still think that you're going to get the essence of the lessons. And can you imagine this book absolutely filled and crinkled full of your beautiful color work? So she starts with the basics. You know, what is color? What's the color wheel? There's the color wheel. What are tints? What are hues? What are values? What are color schemes? This is very standard information, regardless of the medium that you're working in. But I think where it gets really interesting is her ways, her discussions on watercolor specifically, like, you know, how to mix all the different greens that you need if you only have one or potentially no greens in your color palette. I also like that she has some exercises that are very technical, but mixed into them are exercises that are much more inspirational. There's so much really useful information in here and I encourage you to pick up a copy yourself have a flip through and then actually paint in it which is what I'm gonna do and hopefully I can show you what that looks like <laughs> 